Hi guys, I am Yoko from Japan and I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day today. In this video, I am going to talk about the case of a South Korean terrorist arrested in Japan and I hope that you guys know what I'm talking about. For those who don't know about this case, I'll tell you the summary because I'm nice. So this incident occurred on November 23rd. There was a bomb blast at Yaskuni Shrine in Tokyo and if you are not really sure of the place, the shrine is something like Arlington National Cemetery in the US but um, of course a Japanese version of it with more religious um, feeling of our own to it. And in case you're curious, I'll put the link of the detailed explanation in the description below so check it out. So the explosion happened inside a stall in a public restroom of Yaskuni Shrine and fortunately no one was injured. However, it does not change the fact that there was an explosion and that somebody could have been injured because the explosion was as bad as it created a very big hole on the ceiling. So as I said in the beginning, the suspect is a South Korean man living in South Korea. He first flew from South Korea to Japan and then set up a bomb in the public restroom of the shrine and then flew back to South Korea. And then he came back here. And this time, of course, he was stopped at the airport. It was interesting because at first we Japanese were like, oh my gosh, we let him go, like how could we do that? But then we were like, wait a minute, there comes the man, let's arrest him! So, yeah. So what was this suspect thinking? His first testimony was that he returned to Japan in order to bomb again. He also said that he came back to have a look at the aftermath of the explosion in the restroom. So I could say that this means that he's looking at this um, explosion as some kind of experiment of terrorism because these comments by him make him, him such an obsessed terrorist in my opinion but this South Korean suspect is now denying his crime so only time will tell what this was all about. But I can't wait, I can't stop thinking about why he decided to come back here. There's a source of information which says that the South Korean government encouraged him to visit Japan again for a political settlement. But the police here, of course, is handling this case as terrorism because it is terrorism, you know what I mean? The question still remains though, like, how did the South Korean suspect bring a bomb from all the way from South Korea to Japan? Or if he didn't bring it, then how did he create one here with what? With whose help? Or was this really all by him? Or did somebody give him an order? Or what? Like, we are not sure. There's a bright side of this incident though, because now Japan has good enough reasons to revise and reinforce our current laws here. Or we could possibly uh, revise the constitution too, in order to protect ourselves better. In addition to that, people here have started to suggest that we need a better surveillance system. So that's good that people here are thinking about security more seriously now without any injury. I have to say though that I'm feeling a little strange because we see how the Western countries are now facing ISIS more than ever, which Japan should be paying attention to because we're exposed to the threat as well. But the thing is, Japan already has many enough problems with China in both North and South Korea, such as those nations kidnapping the people here or their people murdering ours because just because they are Japanese or they are destroying the cultural assets of here like they simply damage or they put up fire on temples or shrines and so forth. Plus the Chinese Communist Party is oppressing the human rights of other Asians massively which I think is something that the world should be bringing more light to and also for that Japan could be um, the next Fix them too. Just so you know though, I am not gonna call all Koreans terrorists of course, but let's just face the fact that cases like this have been happening and we need to know things black and white so that we will know how to solve things. Haters from South Korea don't only target Japan as you know, like the US ambassador Mark Lippert that had been sent to South Korea for example, he had to receive 80 stitches in his face after he was 
attacked by a knife-wielding assailant in March this year. I wonder why the South Korean people are not bashing like criminals like this one or similar criminals together with those who bring um, politics into sports or music fields. Rather than bashing, what I see South Korean people doing is them praising or worshipping those criminals or haters as their heroes. As for those criminals, like they are terrorists as you can tell and maybe not everyone is praising those kind of terrorists but what you need to realize is that that is what the world thinks or hears about South Korea and especially Japanese people know that South Korean people praise um, those kind of people like historically too. So by looking at this phenomenon I can't help but thinking that the bias education system and media system in South Korea have gone a little too far. Just for your information in other developed countries such as Japan, the US, UK and so forth, we also have biased um, education and media systems but the as for recent years root of the problem has been the content of those being self-torturing which is totally the opposite of self-praising South Korea. Self-torturing education and media systems are actually bringing another kind of problems but that's another story so let's put that aside for now. Anyways let's get back to the suspect of the bombing. Another question to ask about this case is what is the point of this crime anyway? Like bombing our meaningful shrine so that he can prove what? That he's a terrorist or some kind of biased hero or that Japanese people deserve to be attacked and die or what kind of benefits does this bring to whom? The reason why I ask this stupid question is because South Korea is facing serious domestic problems and believe it or not, Japan has been helping the nation in many ways for so long. And we even have 600,000 residents, Korean residents, living inside of Japanese land. And this year also marks half a century since um, the Japan-Korea diplomatic normalization, meaning both Japan and South Korea like the government, we do not want any drama politically. For this reason, I think this South Korean terrorist move was shallow. Or did he want to believe that the society of his nation is just fine and that our relation in between should be bad? So, I am not sure if this was a personal move or not though, because it is a typical move of the Chinese Communist Party I mean the Chinese government and the South Korean government to dodge the bullets from their own citizens by showing another target for their billet, aka Japan. If any of South Korean people are watching this video, I'd like to know what you think of the treaty on basic relation between Japan and the Republic of Korea and another treaty that was concluded at the same time in 1965 which says that the Korean government and Korean people could henceforth no longer claim reparations from Japan. The reason why I bring it up is because since we Japanese know the existence of those treaties, we Japanese think that um, things from the past have been solved and politically over for half a century now. So whenever we come across some kind of obstacle in Japan and Korea relations, such as Korean people complaining about Japan or when they commit um, hate crimes against us, we get confused what it's for. To hate us Japanese forever, just like the president there was saying at first, or I don't know, like whatever it is, isn't that based on your cultural value? And isn't that categorized as racism in the international society today? Like what I mean is we're like, what were those treaties in our money for, you know? Like Korean people want us to keep apologizing forever for the crime that we didn't commit or they want us to think that they're special victims and that we need to be paying more and more money just for their existence? If so, I'd like to ask, like, is the rest of the world accusing other nations like how South Korea is doing to Japan? Or have South Korean people accused the US yet? Like the enemy of the World War II? Or have they ever tried to explode Arlington uh, National Cemetery? Like, the big question is, are Korean people coherent? 
after all, I hope that uh, people in South Korea will start questioning their common sense. And as for the people from other places in the world, when it comes to um, cases and problems like this, I'd like you to look at things from political uh, aspect because otherwise we'll be only creating more and more problems which we do not want. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll put many links in the description so check them out. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!